Am yeah. I still doing the intro? Yeah, you're, you're doing it. Oh. Hello and welcome to the Counterpoint Podcast. This time a little different because I don't have to record it, so we might have some frames. It's possible. I'm, as always, Brendan, and here with Luke. Hello. And Joe. How's it going? Might have been taking a drink when I had to say your name. Yeah, there it is. So, uh, what have you guys been playing this week? I've been playing Quake Champions. It's a wonderful game. Have you? No, no. This game's terrible. <laughs> do uh, do board games count? Sure, they are I'm games, and you play them. I've been playing D and D. What kind of what kind well, of? That's campaign? not a board game. So you kind of buried the lead. Come again? It's a tabletop game. You asked about board games, John. But it's still I a mean, game in which you play. So go on. On a board. Go on. Yeah, I mean, it still counts. It's just not is a board. It, is it on a board? Not really. I, I can Sometimes. be. It's on like a map. I mean, it depends on a, what kind of it depends on uh, who your set, setup But you it's have, not yeah. always on. It's not always on DRM either. Yeah, sure. I don't know. I've always enjoyed D&D. &D. And then I uh, found some friends that I convinced to play. Who was the first friends. person you played D&D with? Who? Yeah. I think he's talking to you because I've yeah. never played D. &D. Yeah, I, we're talking <laughs> to you. you say? Who, Who was, was the first person you ever played D and D with? Who was the first person I played D and D with? Yeah. I it was uh, it was me and then my roommate out in California and then uh, a couple of the kids that we lived with uh, out in California. Then I was a DM. Just went through like the first campaign. And then since then, some people at the, the painting place that I work at now, they play D&D, &D, and they invited me to their campaign. And it was Pretty exciting. Exciting news all around. Oh, yeah. yeah. What have you been playing this week? I don't remember. Oh, yeah, a little bit of Metro. Um, and really, I've just been fucking with my computer in the last week and working. Nice. But now I'm ready. I have the next two days off, so I'll be playing nothing but video games. I uh, started playing more MTG Arena, and then I've been playing Jurassic World Evolution. Oh, that game's not good. Uh, I don't mind it. I'd... It's not a bad game, but it's it's worse than the original, so... The original what? The game that it literally, clearly just copied off of. Yeah. Uh, Operation Genesis. I don't know. I'm, I've been having fun with this. It's not the dinos building the park. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's made by the same people who made Planet Coaster, which is a game I play quite regularly. Except Planet Coaster, you can like make stuff more. Yeah. yeah. That's about it. I really haven't been playing it too much. I've been playing more MTG Arena because a friend and I have just. Been Playing. Yeah. If you if you get a chance, fire up your uh, PlayStation Two and give uh, give Operation Genesis a try, and then compare the two. Maybe that'll be a topic that we could uh, cover in the future. Good. I think but it's a I good idea. Own the game. Play PlayStation in Canada. It's also on PC. Are they good? Should I check them out? Operation Genesis is very very old, and Do you can like Park Sims. Yeah, it's a simulator. Where you oh, run a yeah. park. I love the uh, roller coaster tycoon. Yeah. And that was so huge. wait, you never played Planet Coaster? I have not. So Planet run Coaster Zoom is the tycoon. sequel essentially to uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon Three. Can was the PS2 as well, right? Hmm. Planet Coaster was PS2 as well, right? No, Planet Coaster came out like last year. Oh, what am I thinking of? I don't know what you're thinking of. Some weird coaster game. I'm 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 pretty sure I know what it was because it came out like eight different times under eight different names. It wasn't a. It wasn't as good as uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon. I know what you're talking about though. But yeah, I need to figure out what this is. Planet Coaster is like a relatively new game. It's by far the best coaster sim. Um, on the market right now. What makes it better than? I mean, like. Uh, yeah. Just, just play it. Just okay. play it, and you'll be like, "Oh, I know what you're talking about." Now. Okay. So, the way oh, you build the coaster is significantly better. Like, just you don't 
go in like chunks anymore, like in Roller Coaster Tycoon and all the other roller coaster games. You actually like make the curve at every point. You decide exactly like how inverted it goes, different things like that. Like you completely control the track for the uh, coaster creation, which is cool. And then the park simulation is actually on par with what Roller Coaster Tycoon does. The graphics are far improved. Um, it's just an overall better experience in my mind compared to uh, Tycoon 3. There are some cool things that like Tycoon 3 does that are like goofy as fuck, but Planet Coaster is just better. And you can tell from like the moment you like build your first coaster exactly what you can do in the game. You're like, holy fuck. Okay. Like people make entire like people make themed rides. There's an alien themed ride that is like 15 minutes long. You can watch it on YouTube. It's pretty dank. Like seriously, because of all the creation tools, you can like basically uh, what, what's the term? Not commit fraud. <laughs> but like you can basically like look. I made a like a complete remake of like this movie from a roller coaster perspective like it's it's nuts what people can do wow that's insane yeah people i think there's a halo level there's a uh, really cool and this mod is very small you can, i mean it, the other thing is when people make their roller coasters you can literally just download them right away so right. if you haven't played planet coaster and you have enough money to buy planet coaster and you liked roller coaster tycoon one two and three planet coaster is the way to go. The big thing about Planet Coaster, which I haven't, which I have tested, and I can prove that my new uh, CPU, in fact, runs it much faster. Is like once you get to like, depending on your CPU, of course, once you get to like a thousand guests in your park at the same time, probably on your computer, it starts like chugging, right? So on my old computer, when I used to get to about two thousand guests, my computer would just chug and chug and chug away. And now, I've loaded up a game where I had like 3,500, no problems. So, I'm sure at some point, there's going to be an issue, but it looks like our match was aborted. I don't know how to get out of the match, though. There, you did, you did something. It says launching server now. Okay. Well, look at me. There it is. Know. Dude, I'm voting for lockbox because it's not the ones we've done before. Have we done Longest Yard? I don't think we have. Oh look, it's BJ Blazkowicz. Maybe we have done this one before. I don't know. We'll definitely do the Longest Yard. What? I have to get one impressive medal, and I'll get two thousand anyway, next week. Let's talk about some things. Let's do it. Um, the first thing I want to talk about was actually the Disney remakes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I'm pretty sure I'll have the same opinion as everyone else on the internet in that uh, any kind of uh, outrage is complete bullshit, except if your outrage is that they suck. I'm not, like, I outraged. Think... I just think that they're pointless. Like, Yeah, they don't tell a new story. They don't, they don't do anything new. They're just bad. In my opinion, they're actually just the same story, but more inferior. Like, you can just do less with live action than animation and yeah. i don't really understand the idea behind it because they do this for stuff like like the avatar the last airbender remake that they're going to do for uh the netflix series and it's like yeah in my opinion avatar the last airbender is like one of my it's, you know, it's yeah my but here's the, here's the difference okay the people who are making these disney remakes don't give a shit about the original ip at all and the people well, who are course, making yeah. the Avatar remake that's live action actually give a shit because they're the creators, the original creators. Well, I mean, even so, my point is it doesn't need to be made. I don't understand why yeah. people think that it's worse because it's animation. Like, I actually think that it, that makes it better. Yeah, I, I actually think that at this point in time, live action is starting to kind of fall by the wayside and that people would rather have cartoon like back to how it was i mean you can just do more with it so I, I, yeah i never really understood the push you, for, you like, can do action. more for much less too but i heard aren't they actually doing that just because they need to renew copyright 
Um, I'm not sure if that's true. Maybe Brennan has uh, something to say about that. But my um, understanding is no. They they can basically. I mean, if they need to renew copyright, wouldn't they be making a new Mickey movie? That wouldn't renew their copyright. Disney just pushes legislation to renew copyright because yeah, Mickey is their oldest thing that is the only thing that threatens to fall into yeah. public domain. Oh, uh, they so have like Mickey shows that were on. So old. That's the, how it works, though. It's just when it's based on years. So originally, yeah. um, but if they make a remake or something, or they use it again, doesn't that renew the copyright? No, uh, no. The original one is I still mean, like they, they, That's how they. That's how they argue for extending the copyright law. Yeah, they say, look, we're still using it. It's very important to our budget yeah. or whatever. And that's why things pass into uh, public domain less now. But this, yeah, you know, and this all went went down in the. 50s and 60s where we kind of like gave uh, corporations like unlimited control but uh, just at the beginning when they first started getting this unlimited control kind of shit so if you go to you know if you look at the original copyrights and there's other laws that are bullshit but if you look at the original copyright laws it was what 20 years uh, I don't think it was that short it was really short like it was significantly shorter than it is now I think it was I mean, it is. It was oh, way shorter. Oh, than here, now, yeah. I, f I remember what it is now. Specifically, it was when you died. So when the original creator dies, right? Um, the surviving kin get like ten years, something like that. So it was the lifespan of the creator plus ten years, and then it became the lifespan of the creator plus so many years, and then it became like the company, <laughs> and then it became like longer and longer, and now it's essentially. You will never see Mickey fall out of copyright, so copyright law itself needs to change how it works from a basic level. All right. So, what that means is they're gonna have to put into law like, all right, something drops out of copyright after 30 years of no use, which right now is not a law, but people people think it is. But that's actually uh, that's actually how it is for video games. If if no video game or that that video game isn't sold anymore on anything they can uh after a while it becomes abandonware because it's it's a software right mm -hmm. and then you yeah can so play it. it's it's not so much uh copyright that does that it's ip law like it's the same it's the same reason that um when movies have a contract for an ip they have to remake the movie every however many years because otherwise they lose it. Mm -hmm. but yeah, so going, going, going back to like the uh, the animation versus these new ones, uh, I mean like you can just do less with live action. Like uh, taking Aladdin for example, my family actually dragged me along so I had to see that one. I wasn't planning on it, like I didn't want to spend money on that, but uh, I mean like it was just a couple of like instances where it was like it was just less fun because they couldn't uh, do anything like amazing unless they did like CGI or whatever and it was like at that point you might as well be doing animation like um, for the song about uh, him being like the Prince Ali or whatever yeah you know, like the part where it's like strongest 10 regular men or whatever in the animation he like held Except up 10 over, yeah. like super buff people but in like the new one they just kind of like sang about it and he like flexed his muscles and that was it, it was, so like... here here's my thing with the the remakes is that they either try to be too faithful or i mean i guess usually the problem is they try to be too faithful they don't but with the with the disney like, remakes absolutely there is no like, like oh we changed it up At so no point, have they ever beauty and the beast it? added a song i haven't seen aladdin but i heard they added a jasmine song yeah uh, but my problem. But I heard that is... one was bad. But the Beast song in Beauty and the Beast was okay. Uh, but Mulan, I think, is is interesting because they're not trying to be faithful to the movie. They're trying to be more faithful to the culture, which is strange. Nice. Yeah, because it wasn't necessary. I don't know. Here's the thing. Um, you can't. I don't, I don't want to say you can't have your cake and eat it too, but it, it kind of goes with that. That they're. No matter how faithful they are to the culture, um, people are going to find a way to rip that movie into shreds for it being like whitewashed, even if it's not. Well, sure. Like it, it doesn't matter. That's just like the know. nature. Nope, that's the nature of our controversy, like culture right now. I guarantee you, 
someone is going to be very upset for something. Like, well, yeah, but you're because only... somebody is just because somebody's going to be mad doesn't but, mean that you can't but try to make it work. You can you can try if that's what your artistic direction is, but guess what? These movies have no artistic direction at all. All right, that that's a fair point right there. These movies are not made to be art. These movies are made to make money in that alone. You know, where you can say, like, all right, well, the MCU is made to make money, but it's also made to tell great stories. Are you really telling me, that, like, the remake of Aladdin was 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 need necessary to tell a great story? Or the Absolutely. remake of Beauty and the Beast <laughs> was like, oh, we needed to tell this story. It was it was new, it's fresh. Here's the reason why, and this is what, uh, just what I heard it on a different podcast. It's much more popular. But, uh... Th this is what it is, okay? They could re-release, they could make the 2D animation, they could update it to 4K. Um, objectively making it better. Objectively making it better, by the way, John Jonathan. Alright, objectively, that was last, that was last no, 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 podcast. This is true. Objectively making it better by making the quality of the image superior by making the audio superior by remastering it. Okay? This. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right? Just continue. Now, they could do that and they would probably make 100, $100 $150 million from a $5 million investment. Right? This is what this other podcast said. Or, they could make a lazy movie that maybe cost them 100 150 and because it's a new version, because it's a live action remake, it'll make a billion. This is just the people's thought process, right? Yeah. This movie's gonna make a billion. We're gonna make 900 million versus we're gonna make 100 to 150 million. And it's actually a safer bet, even though it costs more up front. Also, this is kind of like a petty point, but uh, the new, like, uh, the new Lion King one, not even live action. I don't know why people are calling it live action. It's just CGI. What are you talking about? They trained a live lion, boar, and meerkat yeah, to they dance. Did they did this for, listen, and here's the other thing. Uh, they're calling it live action because it looks more, it's, it's meant to look realistic CG. Yeah, so, but I mean, that's not what live action is. Yeah, yeah, but that's, like, yeah. What, what would you call like, Sin City? Is that live action? I don't know. What I mean, it, my whole thing is they, they have live action uh, actors, but everything else isn't live action in Sin City. Like that's that's how it's made, right? Uh, same with other. Like you wouldn't technically technically know these things aren't live action, but I get why people are calling them live action. Jungle Jungle Book got away with it because they got one real boy in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess there's. And I, here's the thing. I guarantee well, you. Know, here's, they here, will have like a Serengeti thing. plane that is actually from that place, and that will qualify it as live action to someone. Here's another uh, thing about that one particularly. You know what would have made me like way happier is if they if they wanted to do this, you know, if they wanted if to de defile the ending. grave. No, no. Um, if they Make just did, happier. if they did a shot for shot faithful recreation, can call it a remaster instead of a live action version, use the same voice acting, given like the same story but with like new technology, because that kind of makes sense. It's like you know, it's a remaster. Yeah, but at that point, at that point, why would you just make the same resolution? voice acting? That's just re-releasing the movie, my dude. Yeah, but I mean, like, <laughs> no, no, no. It, that's a remaster at that point. It's not a. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I would, I would be more. But that's what. Remaster. That's exactly what Luke just told you would make less money. Yeah, yeah I know. That would but make. It, that's what people would prefer. Like when they redid the Lion King, for example, they did that a couple of years ago. It made them a little bit of money, and they didn't have to spend much money. But now they are realizing, with like Beauty and the Beast, like we can spend a little bit more money, and we can make a lot more money so that's exactly what they're doing I mean it, it's that simple in my opinion I agree with uh, with Linus from Linus Tech Tips and his point of view it's totally what it is anyway next subject uh, since you're talking about movies I wanted to bring up an interesting topic to me anyway so I don't remember when or who I was talking about this with, but uh, we started talking about Jake Gyllenhaal and him to to me. I, I don't think I would ever describe Jake Gyllenhaal as one of my favorite actors. He's a safe However, 
he's in a lot of movies yeah. that I really enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, like a lot. So I didn't know if you guys had any actors like that. Like not not like actors that like you know disappear into roles or whatever. Because I'm I'm very aware that I'm watching Jake Gyllenhaal do a movie. Yeah, he's <laughs> he just he's doesn't not come to a mind method for actor him. or like a Shakespearean trained actor. At least he doesn't portray himself that way. But yeah, I don't know. Do you guys have any anybody like that? I think Jake Gyllenhaal is a great example of someone who's like yeah. I mean it's it's weird because and, and it comes down to him being a safe bet like. Hollywood is stupid, and they're like, oh, um, this movie that this guy was in was successful. Let's recast him, because he was successful in this last movie. Yeah. When, like, if the movie is just right, I don't give a shit about the acting unless it's really bad. <laughs> like, if the, if the acting is, like, terrible, but everything else is great, it's still gonna be a great movie. Like, if it, I don't know if I said that right, but if the acting is, like, okay. Yeah, you're saying it. Uh, it's hard to for a performance to go to a level that yeah, really like, elevates the film? Like is that what you're trying and, to say? Yeah, and there's, there's things that elevate a film far beyond what it should be. Like, I thought Tron Legacy, without Daft Punk's uh, soundtrack, is, like, a 6, 7 out of 10, right? When you throw that soundtrack in... You go from a six, seven out of ten to like a fucking great movie, <laughs> just because. Yeah, like a nine out of ten to me, to me anyway, because yeah, 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 I that is totally subjective. But the the music is that good that it, it propels that movie forward that far. You will not receive an argument from me. I really like that movie. Yeah, and I, I, just have I, good I like watching of that movie. I, I like, think it's pretty corny, but I mean, it's not bad. Yeah, it's corny, but again, the music is so good that you, I mean, you're literally like watching a Daft Punk album. Yeah, like, that's yeah, what yeah. it comes down to. The, and they're like, they could make it worse, and it would still be an enjoyable movie that I'd recommend because I'd be like, the audio is dope. Mm -hmm. It's worth it. The audio is dope. Like, I think that music plays a huge role in a lot more than people realize. Like, it's not just movies, like, it, uh, trailers, and I guess that's part of movies, but, uh, games, like, oh, yeah. anything really, like, Breath of the Wild without its soundtrack would be significantly worse. Mm -hmm. The, the uh, piano Even just, score. like, even if you're at a restaurant and they don't have music, like, a lot of people won't be able to pinpoint what's wrong, but as soon as you're like, man, it's really quiet, they should play some music, like, you know, it just, it makes sense of, like, oh, yeah. this is what's bugging me. Yep. That'd be the way it is. It just be like that. It be like that sometimes. I can I can concur. You don't think it do, but it do. But it is. You don't think I it think is, but it do. And I don't know what it do. But so I don't want you guys to think about this or be like, because I know I think about this sometimes when I when I get asked this question and ultimately I'm like, wait, I just the first one that comes to mind. That's it. That's the end of my like discussion. But what is favorite movie of all time? I really like. Uh, well, it's kind of hard to choose like a favorite film. Yeah, but like but I, kinda, I, I had to choose one since like I was out in Hollywood and I got asked this lot. It'd be uh, Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah. I always answer with two films, and that Fair. is Princess Bride and Terminator Two. Really? Why the Princess Bride? And it's just a really like fun movie that I could keep watching. Like, I, I don't think I don't get sick of it. What that word means? It's got a lot of uh, quotable moments too. Yeah, like, yeah, that's very important, uh, especially for older men. I feel like now it's less important because you know memes are everywhere. But I feel like for movies that are a little bit older that went through like nameless age, it was like super important. Yeah, and then like T two, I feel the same way. It has a lot of quotable moments, but it's just like the other side. It's more action oriented than yeah, and it's really well. I mean, it's really well made. Just all Monty around. Python and the Holy Grail. That's another one with like tons of quotable moments. So, I like I, I don't want to come across as like an art snob when people ask me this, but it legitimately it's it's the first one that comes to mind every single time, and that is Pan's Lab for me. And it also. What about it? Hmm? Are you saying that's your favorite? That's my favorite movie, yeah, definitely. 
Why are you so nervous about just saying it's your favorite? Because it's it's a movie not a lot of people know, and I feel like it's that's like a history. To to back up his ideals. Yeah, no, it's like a history like <laughs> thing to say like it's a movie you've never heard of. Nah. Mm, I don't know. It's, it's I wouldn't weird. call it a movie people haven't heard of. Yeah, it's people have definitely. It's like if you know film, you know that movie. And if you don't, and you don't know the movie, nobody's gonna judge you because they don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, Pan's Labyrinth, I, I feel like the pacing of it is, like, perfect. I feel like it it has, like, the perfect amount of, like, fantasy, the perfect amount of, like, brutality that's still in it. Like, everything about that movie is enjoyable to me. I could rewatch that movie and still see new things in the art direction. Like, the last time I watched it, I... Well, I haven't watched in a while, but like the last time I legitimately watched, was like the third time I watched it. I noticed that when they're giving like the the funeral speech, um, they literally are talking about um, like let let uh, let him show you the way, and she like picks up like the way that the what the funeral with the pastor is saying and what the the young lady is doing like all of them like add up everything that happens on screen has a purpose for being there which you can't ask for something better than that you know it's do you do you want to know my feelings on asking people their favorite movies yeah i know i don't like it either but no no no, no. my problem is when somebody answers with a movie that was released in the last five years i feel like that should not be allowed because you need some time to like marinate on Mm, I don't think, Do you you think so. I don't think you need five years. I don't think that that's fair because some can't, people can't. Like... You can't say this is my favorite movie after just watching something, but I feel like three months—that's plenty of time. To I, okay, so the reason I say five years is because then I can presume they've probably seen it more than once. Yeah. You really, you have to see it more than once. I. There's plenty of movies that the first time you watch them are like, wow, that was great. And the second time you watch, you're like, ugh. Like, I actually took a deep dive at this movie. And... But I mean, like, here's the thing. What if it's their favorite because of that first time they watched it? You know what I mean? Like, you can't kind of, you can't gate somebody's opinion. Yes, I can. You can. I That's totally very important. It's, it's like a video game, right? Like Journey, for example, right? It's a great game, but if you play it again, it's the same game. And that does... Uh, like, make it a little bit not as, not necessarily that it's bad, but it doesn't. I'm not help saying its that that can't weigh in on your opinion, but like, if somebody were to tell you what their it, favorite movie was, and you're like, oh, you can't watch that one again with it being like as good, and they agree you, with you, don't you say, they, still they don't say it's their favorite movie. They don't even have to necessarily watch it again. It. They just have to absorb new information. Yeah, about, about it. it maybe. Like, see, see a clip, hear somebody else's opinion, like learn information that they missed, something like that. Yeah, like, like uh, uh, like Chick-fil-A, you'd be like, like, they're really good, and then you'd be like, ah, oh, fuck, but they're, like, super homophobic, and, like, are for, like, gay conversion therapy and shit. I'm not gonna support that anymore, right? Like, fuck Chick-fil-A. So, you just took so, that to a real weird place. <laughs> so we talked about to a weird place Haunting of Hill House, right? Uh, think of all the people that watched it and didn't catch all of the ghosts in the background. Yeah, so it's not really on. a huge deal. So I'm saying, don't spoil it for me. I'm gonna go watch. It. Cause I now been told by like four it. people. I've literally no, been told by like four people to watch it in like the last three days. So now I it's have a good one show. of those. One of those. But I'm just, like last time I'm just saying there are ghosts <laughs> in the background. But someone today, literally at the zoo, was like, you, "You've got to watch this." <laughs> it's I was so like, good. Really? It is. Good. Yeah. Yeah, so like something like that. Like then you could see clips online or stuff, and you know catch things that you didn't notice before, and it changes things. Yeah, ultimately sure. that is gonna change. So like imagine I, if you like I'm not trying favorite. to I'm not trying to argue that that doesn't make an experience better for me, but you're you're you were gating like other people's opinions, which I think is a weird concept. I'm not saying it. they they can't like claim it's their favorite movie. I just think I. For me, I don't accept that when I say, yeah. like, what is your favorite movie, because it's like... Yeah, it's also, you like... Mean, give me you're... something you've sat on and thought about. And it's also, right. like, the qualifications for, like, someone else's opinion matter to me, you know? So, like, if I'm seeing someone, and they're, like, talking about their opinion, and they're like, why did you like, uh, why is your favorite movie Top Gun? And they're like, it's a really fun ride, but they have nothing else to offer. I'm not gonna be like, yeah, I see your point of view. I'm gonna be like... God, this person is fucking stupid. Like, 
Like, if that's wow. all they can say, if that's, that's all they can say about the movie, like, yeah, it was fun, I enjoyed it, like, no. Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna, like, I'm not gonna sit there and, like, someone just tell me, like, it was really good because it was really good. Like, I wonder if it was really good because it was really good. I mean, that's fine, but, like, that's not, like, a defining characteristic of why it was good. And when you're like, why was that so good to you? And they're like, it was really good. So I'm like, your opinion's fucking lame, bro. And now I'm less likely to watch whatever show was recommended to me because they just said it was really good. Fair enough. So would you guys consider yourself movie buffs? Like, how into movies are you guys? Or do you not, like, I watch care? a lot of, uh, of, like, not necessarily movie breakdowns, but I watch a lot of, um, what are they I called? consume a They're lot like of essays. Everything. They're like essays. Yeah, I agree. I consume a lot of video shit essays? and I produce nothing, so. Yeah, I, I watch video <laughs> essays as well. And... Yeah, video oh, essays are like the that. shit, especially I, I, on I don't know that I really call are. myself a buff, because that makes me sound like a dildo, but... Yeah. Uh, I like movies a lot, and I, I like watching new movies. And I like dissecting movies that I really enjoy, and like I keep out. a list of the movies, shows, games, books, everything I have consumed. Yeah. I don't keep a list, but I know what you're saying, and I agree. Yeah. Next topic, eh? Yeah, next topic. Sure. Um, I mean, I have Stranger Things season three written down, but I don't. It's a bit too soon, and yeah, I don't know if you guys watched it. It's too soon. I haven't watched it. Uh, I haven't even watched, watched season it. two, so. Oh, I've right. watched well, season it. two was less good. Can I say a little bit? I won't spoil anything. I'm just gonna give general like what I thought about Go Stranger Things it. as a whole. Season one was so brilliant to me, but it was like a closed story. And it was like. I don't know. They left a couple things open, but then when season two hit, they didn't really like hit on anything that they. Yeah, left I didn't open. think season two was very good. Then you're not gonna like season three because I already watched season three. I thought season three was better than two. Really, I did not. I think it's gone progressively worse, but not like. Here's the thing: each individual season, if looked at under a microscope, is excellent. You know what I mean? Like the the beautiful cinematography still there. The dialogue is pretty good. Just season three, I thought the characters were weak. I thought they totally changed course on multiple people, yeah. and like it didn't make any sense. I mean, that's that's yeah. basically what I heard from the second one, and I was like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't wanna... But the second the, one has a subplot one... that I disliked, and I'm glad it didn't come back. Are you talking so, about that one episode? Yes. Well, that was a, an extra episode, and it was supposed to start a possible spinoff. Uh, it was show. bad, and I hated it. Yeah, nobody liked it. That's why the spinoff <laughs> show didn't happen. <laughs> So here's my deal with basically all of this shit. Um, I haven't watched season two because I heard it wasn't as good as season one. And I haven't watched season three because I haven't watched season two. <laughs> but um, is there an, an instance where you watched a show and maybe like the first season, similar to Stranger Things, the first season was like amazing and then the prior series or a series uh, after that you know different seasons were nowhere near as good and it kind of like bummed you out tons tons of shit but a, lot <laughs> what? Of, a lot of anime <laughs> um, oh, yeah, yeah. Fallen Skies uh, I wouldn't say amazing but I liked the first season of Walking Dead far better than anything else I bothered to watch for Walking Dead yeah. Yeah. Um, what else Heroes, that was a, a heartbreaker. Yeah, I told you uh, that you were gonna you're gonna get your heart broken. I was like, whatever, man. Like, <laughs> Wait, are you talking about Heroes? I watched yeah. Heroes as it came out. You fuck. I know. I was like, oof, it's going I, downhill, and you're like, yeah, but it's still pretty good. And I'm like, yeah, but you it's not. This was a long time ago. The but right I, person. I, I, no, it was you specifically. <laughs> I remember being at your house, and you were like watching an episode, and I was like. It's really gone downhill, huh? And you were like, it's still really good. And I was like, mm. This rings no bell. It's probably season like two or three. And I was just like, oh yeah. It's Wait, really I, there's no way said, I would have said it's said still it, really good in season you said it. You said it rings no bells. Would you yeah. like a prize? A no bells prize? 
<laughs> you know, that's why they called that it, because the, the original creator of the Nobel Prize created the alarm. No, nope, it's because his yeah. last name was Nobel. <laughs> Didn't he? <laughs> you invented dynamite, right? He did. TNT. You tried to laugh at me, Luke. And I was right. I was trying to give you a meme. I was trying to meme on you. It's okay, I still had fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all that matters in the end. But, uh, uh, no, specifically... Yeah, the show's going downhill is pretty calm. Game yeah, of Thrones but, went downhill. Oh, but specifically the last two seasons, which is sad because it made it so far, I thought it was, like, immune to it, as most people did. Most, I feel like most people who watch Game of Thrones, when season, after season six, even though it, it wasn't as good in certain ways as prior seasons, it, it still had its moments that were, like, breathtaking. Your uh, yeah. Like the end, of the the final two episodes of Game of Thrones season six were like bangers. They were fucking great, and I was like, ah, all hope is restored. Plus that one episode of season six with Hodor. I mean, that shit fucked me. Like there are some really good episodes in season six. Yep. Got to be honest, I haven't seen Game of Thrones yet. Well, it's worth it. It's pretty good. But. Season 7, it had like, you know, it was like a 50-50. There were good moments, there were bad moments. And then, unfortunately, Season 8 is more bad moments than good moments. And anyone who... I'm not sitting here telling you it's, it's complete trash and it's the worst thing I've ever seen. Because that would be wrong to say. But the writing is bad. Like, point blank, anyone who disagrees with the writing being bad is a liar, or isn't being truthful to themselves. The writing is terrible. Um, a lot of the issues that, like, a lot of Turbo nerds took issue with, like, well, they didn't plan their battle uh, as efficiently as ep Season 2, Episode 9, and it's like, what? They're fighting zombies. How would they even know how to, like, defend against a zombie, you know what I mean? I don't know, because, again, I haven't seen this show. But anyway, all I'm trying to say is people were freaking out over... What, what pissed me off even more about what makes me more disappointed is the fact that I defended Season 8 up until Episode 4. I was like, no, it's still good. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm not seeing it. And then most of those people just wanted something to hate. And then Season 8, Episode 4 came out, and I was like... <sighs> Like, oh my god, that was that was not good. Like And then the the people who were like, see I told you it was getting worse like basically got to be right, which makes me very upset. Anyway, what what are your opinions, friend? I mean sure. Whatever you say. <laughs> okay, but what? he has no opinions of I his do, own. He like agrees. don't give a fuck. Oh, like all right. Brennan, you've seen Westworld, right? Uh, yeah. only season one. Oh, I really want to watch I think, that. I think season episodes. one of Westworld is my all-time favorite one season of a show ever. It was good. My my roommate keeps telling me to watch the second season. And it's good. I can't. It's still beat. really good. It's just not. And there's specifically one episode that is like jaw-droppingly good, like amazingly good. There's one episode that is is so fucking good. And the thing is, it it's like. It's the opposite of like season two of a uh, of a uh, what do you call it? Uh, Stranger Things, where it's like a spin-off episode, basically, right? And it is amazing. Like it, it is so fucking good, and you're just mad, but like they didn't focus on that more. So he, here's actually my problem with Westworld is they keep focusing on characters that I find far far less interesting than some of the other ones. Like who? Are you? So who's your favorite character? So, Jonathan hasn't seen the show. Okay. I have seen the first two episodes. And he wants to watch the show. I thought he said. I do. Yeah. So, so you, I don't you can you can say this person is more interesting than this person. I don't think that's. Well, it's also a problem of characters being dead, and so I know they want to focus on them. Yeah, but you can say like this this person versus this person. I think they put too much effort. Uh, so on. okay, so Robo Girl, who's the main character? De Dolores or whatever. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about her in any way, shape, or form. Really? But it is focused on her a lot. 
Why is there any specific reason why, or just generally you just don't seem to? Care? I just don't find her story very interesting. Like, a lot of the other robos that are going through the whole identity crisis are more interesting than her. Yeah. She is like remembering a past role she played. The other ones are struggling with their identity as beings. What do you think, like, fun. Maeve or something is more interesting? I, I don't really like Maeve, but from, like, a, a narrative standpoint, yes, it is more interesting. She is trying to figure out what it means to exist, basically. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, Dolores is just like, oh, I played a different role in this park. I must be a robot that is many people, is what it feels like to me. Well, it, wouldn't she still be struggling with that, though? But she doesn't appear to be. <laughs> but So they don't, like, ever go into it, because... Does uh, she never, like, talk to people about well, it or something? Is no, that, like, she definitely main... does uh, later. I'll say that your... Most of your uh, complaints are not necessarily... Like, it, it, trust me, there's less focus on... Like, in fact, there's significantly less focus on Dolores in Season 2, so you have that going for you, which is nice. Uh, I think... Uh, actually, it's a spoiler. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was gonna say yeah. who my. Yeah, I was gonna. Say, no, it's fine. I think yeah, we all know who you're talking about. I know who you're talking about. Jonathan obviously doesn't. But... I have no idea what the hell just happened. Yeah, but you should definitely. Um, you should definitely watch season two because it's still very good. It's not as good as season one, but I feel like season one is the perfect, like perfect like circle of the season where there's it doesn't need anything extra really as much as like stuff goes on and continues to happen yeah i feel like it's a great season like the best season of any tv show i've ever watched i kept watching shows for a full season and then finding out they were canceled it was extremely disheartening what did you watch firefly or something I mean, a while ago, yes, but it's not what I'm talking about. Um, there was a show... Oh, it was about... A spaceship. Uh, Firefly. Uh, yes, Firefly. You got it. Um, it was an ARC ship. And oh, I know what Earth you're talking about. It's dying. on Netflix. It would be amazing if from that description you actually know what I'm talking about. Is it about? the one where it's not actually a ship? Well, it is a ship, it's just not in space, if that's what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. No, it was really interesting, and it was cancelled. <laughs> and I was like, oh. I was intrigued by this, and I wanted to see what would happen. But apparently, the audience did not agree with me. I mean, that might not be the case. It might just be, like... It might be down to the cost for revenue. Like, there's so many dumb shit when it comes to shows, you know? But yeah, it was super interesting, and it did not go any further. At least I thought it was interesting. I mean, I like sci-fi shit. I like it. it. Yeah. I haven't seen it. So. Now you're kind of telling me not to watch it, so it's alright. Mm, the first season's worth it, I would say. It has one big reveal. That's... Enemy team wins. We're really bad. Anyway. Um... <laughs> Are we good at any of the games? That no, we, we haven't. We haven't been wanting, We haven't been good at one. Also, during the stream, at one point, I alt tab and start searching for Mave, and then I'm like, <laughs> oh, uh, oh yeah, I'm I'm on the stream. So <laughs> you have that to look forward to. <laughs> Beautiful, dude. That guy the tried to carry us so fucking it. hard. Oh my god. Yeah. I feel bad right for now. that motherfucker. He's like 26 and one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very sad. What uh, what time are we at? I'm at 45 minutes about, but we have one more. We definitely at least have to talk about the new Nintendo Switch Lite. Okay. My opinion is I don't really do a shit at all. So my opinion is that it's pretty terrible. Like it, okay. it, and I've had people be like, oh, well, it's not that bad. Jonathan, do you know anything about it? I don't. So I okay. really don't have an opinion. Here's, here's the Nintendo Switch Lite. Okay. It is. They put a light on it. It is slightly smaller wow. than the original Nintendo Switch. In fact, its total form factor is closer to the PSP um, than it is the Switch. So it's pretty small, right? Um, it has an actual D-pad, and finally, th the controllers do not come off. It's like one whole unit, and it's supposed to be just better for portability, right? What do you think about that? 
so far it sounds all right. All right, and it's so it's, it's like it's basically it's basically like uh, hold on wait does buff, it still dock? Buff DS. Hold on, so it's two hundred dollars. It's not no, wait does it still dock? So it's it's two hundred dollars instead of three hundred. No, you're not answering my question. But it doesn't fucking dock. So it's not a switch. It's so it's just not a fucking <laughs> switch. You should not be able to call it a switch. That's the whole point of the switch is that it fucking docks. Wait, so wait, so is that it's what, well the is point is that it's so heated? Huh? Is that what has you yes. so heated? Yes, I'm fucking fuming. Because it's dumb as but, shit. It's typical Nintendo of just like fucking up a perfect product. So here's what? why it pisses me off. How did they right? fuck it up? The, the Switch still exists. So, no, so I mean this is basically their not. substitute for no, not having it's, a it's, super three no. DS. So here's the deal, right? The Nintendo Switch uh light you is twice the battery level, right? Or twice the battery power. There's nothing stopping it from docking. The 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 CPU or the GPU, they're actually faster. The fucker can dock, right? Okay. But it can't dock. And this well, is what, can it not dock or does it just not come with it? No, no, no. It can't dock. So here's what I'm thinking. As like as a shareholder like in me is looking at this like, all right, so it can't dock. This is a perfect opportunity to sell a dock that basically does nothing and costs five, ten dollars for sixty dollars. So the other thing is, right, and and so it doesn't here. scale up, just like holds it and you plug into it. Hmm? You're saying like release a dock that doesn't even scale up the resolution, has no circuitry, that it literally just holds the switch? And charges it while it... I mean, here's the thing. that the, What do you think the Switch has in it? Like, the dock, right now. It has nothing. It costs like $10. It's just a circuit space. board with the USBs. Yeah, that's all it does. I mean, it doesn't scale anything up. The, all the dock Well, I mean, does, the, the Switch just knows when it's docked. Yeah, exactly. Everything is in the Switch. And yeah, that's what I meant. It's in the SoC. Because I assume the light wouldn't have that since they don't intend to dock. Yeah, it's, it's all in the SoC. So, what really bothers me is the fact that... There is no reason, uh, physically, that it can't dock. I mean, it just sounds like a stupid move. I don't know why you're so, like... No, no, no. So, so here's the deal, right? It's $200, which is great. It's a great idea. Like, $200, yeah, so many people are going to buy it now. For $200, they're going to buy the shit out of this thing. Except for it doesn't dock. So, what, what makes me upset is the fact that... Why why wouldn't you just sell a separate dock? You would make more money. You All right, here's the deal, right? When you buy a Switch, what does it come with, right? It comes with Joy-Cons, right? Yeah. Which the new one doesn't come with because it's all built in. Right? So, I mean, it still comes with Switch. No, they don't, they're not Joy-Cons because they can't be removed and they don't have motion control. So they took out all the motion control, they took out the vibration, right? So they don't qualify as Joy-Cons, they're just a controller that's cemented into the into the Switch. They use cement? Not actually, but you know what I'm saying. Fuck you. So, there's... That's fine, I get it, right? Like, oh, well we couldn't, you know, take the controllers off the dock, so it wouldn't be like a Switch. Here's my argument. Then fucking sell a dock. And you can also sell an extra controller. I guess. So I you would make more money. You. This I is a perfectly good opportunity for Nintendo not only to save face and saying, yes, this is also dockable if you buy a uh, optional dock. But also, after they buy the optional dock, they can then buy the optional controller. Therefore, selling a $200 product, and let's say you buy the dock for 60 and the controller for 60 you're selling it for 320 And again, none of this is like, you, you don't, no one has to buy these, uh, the dock. No one has to buy the other controller. But the fact that it can means that you're making more money. You would make more money than the regular fucking Switch. What the fuck is wrong with these people? 
sure, but I mean, like, why are you mad about it? They just because did something it's so stupid. stupid. That's classic Nintendo. They always do stupid. They always shit do they something it. stupid it, because it pisses me off every single time. Bad decision. No, they every just, single time. To... No, there's not a good decision, bad decision. There's always something they fuck up on they every have, console. They just have right. to fuck it up. They can't do anything. Ever right. since the Super Nintendo, I'll say with the Super Nintendo. There's nothing that's really fucked up. It's pretty great. Same with the Nintendo, but. With the N64, uh, still having the game cartridge. Listen, if that thing had the game cartridge, it would be on par with, um, it would be almost on par with a GameCube. Like, no, no lie. What they could do with an N64 with 700 megabytes, they, they could basically almost be on par with just the lower resolution, uh, Dreamcast. Like, it's, it's got pretty impressive hardware, other than the fact that it can only store a maximum of 64 megabytes of data per cartridge. And it would cost uh, cartridges way less, right? So, obviously, that's the N64's thing. The controller, I don't think it's a big deal. I think people are, like, are you know, it's so bad. It's not really that bad. Then, um, GameCube, tiny baby discs. Same problem. They couldn't port over every game, so it didn't have a lot of games that the PS2 did. You're just kind of going through the good decision, bad decision. No, the, what is the good decision on the GameCube of, of using a fucking tiny disc? Uh, there wasn't, but the, you said the N64 was pretty good, like hardware-wise. Except for like the fatal decision. flaw of the design that held it back. And made it appear like it had worse graphics than a PlayStation One. Yeah. Sure, but I mean, like, it did fine. It, no, it didn't. Console, did it, it didn't oh. do. I mean, it didn't do like terrible, but it didn't do well. Like, it it performed well below expectations. Hmm. Like the N sixty four, they were like, all right, we made eighty million with the Super Nintendo. We made like one hundred and twenty with Nintendo. Like, 80 million, not dollars, like, we've sold 80 million consoles. So they were projecting, like, we're going to make at least 60 million uh, N64, even if gaming is going down, which is, like, their excuse during the time, like, people weren't playing games as much, or people were on old consoles. So, it comes out, and I think the N64 ended up lifetime sales of, like, 20 million. And again, Nintendo had a bunch of money saved up from the NES days, so it wasn't like they were just trashed and ruined, obviously. They still came out with the GameCube. But they fucked up the GameCube by using mini discs. And it sold like 20 million copies, or like 20 million units. Underperforming both. I'm pretty sure it lost to the Xbox originally. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it did worse than the original Xbox. But I'm not sure. <laughs> and then the Wii. The Wii was pretty great. <laughs> so, there's that. Like, for what it was, it was pretty ingenious. That's the only one that, like, they haven't fucked anything up on. But yeah, I mean... Even if it's as bad a decision as you say it is, which I'll, I'll believe you, but I mean, like, why are you personally so mad about it? I don't know, man. I, just, I guess I just care too much. Uh, I don't, I'm not really that mad about it, but why can't I be outraged? I mean, you can if you really want to be. I just don't see why, why it gets so heated up. It's fun. Doing, we are doing a podcast. But, no, legitimately... Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> but legitimately, it does... It does it does upset me that they aren't smart enough to like like money and also offer their uh, their customers more options. Like, wouldn't you want that? I, I don't understand. It's confusing. Hmm. You know, it, it's just yeah. like typical Nintendo. Always got to do something to fuck it up. They're doing it to spite you. Yeah, it's possible. Personally. And the thing with the uh, with the uh, switch that really didn't really upset me to a major degree, but it's like 
If they would have used newer hardware, and I don't mean newer as in better, I mean newer as in more electrically um, sound hardware, they wouldn't need a fan in the Switch. Or if they did, it would never need to turn on in handheld mode. And it would also have twice the battery. And it would cost the same. But they were like, nah, we're going to use older stuff. And that upset me too as well. Any other topics? Mm, not that I have. Very well. I, I think, are we, are we done here? Sure. Very well. Are you going to sign off, Brendan? Sure. Thanks for listening, watching, whatever you decided to do. And uh, see you next time. Yeah, and whoever has that, is, is that a fan on or is that a dog panting? That's several dogs all at once. Huh? What? <laughs> what I don't know what that say? is in the background. Do you hear that? I do. It's it's, yeah, it's definitely Brennan. Brennan. Definitely yeah. Brennan. It's great. We're ending. What does it matter? Oh, it matters. I, I just had to point it out. Sorry to all of you.